This is a story that started 20 years ago. Lynn and I were traveling south from Portland, Oregon towards Lake Chapala, Mexico. One of our first trips down there before we bought the house in Ajijic. And we stopped in Mazatlan at the Mara Rosa RV park right on the beach in Mazatlan. And as we pulled into the park with our old 1988 33-foot Southwind motorhome, delaminating as it was, <laughs> I saw this big, beautiful, brand new California plated motorhome and I said to Lynn, I'm going to park next to him. I want to be friends with them. And uh, that evening, he pulled a slide out of his big, beautiful motorhome. And it had an outdoor kitchen in it with a freezer right next to it. A freezer not unlike this Bodega 12 volt freezer refrigerator. 20 years later, I've got the motorhome I dreamed of, but I've never completed my outdoor kitchen until the Bodega Company contacted me and said, hey, would you like to try out one of our refrigerator freezers? Here we go. A 20 year old dream coming to manifest itself in my life. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Hey, my old back loves the wheels. So, let me tell you some more of the story. That evening, he pulled out uh, tuna steaks from his freezer right there by the grill and grilled tuna steaks for six of us. Lynn and I and he and his wife and another couple on the other side of him. And I said to Lynn later that evening, someday Lynn, someday, someday's here. <laughs> We spent about three days with those people. He was a fascinating guy and his story was fascinating. And I'll tell you some more of his story at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about my new bodega cooler. Cookies are about to come out of the oven. They're slivered almonds and dried cherries. Wait for them to cool. About five minutes. Okay. I'll be there. <laughs> Hi there. Well, I've had my Bodega car cooler for almost a week, putting it through its paces and making sure that it's going to do what I want it to do uh, before I fill it up with food. Um, first thing was, it had to fit. Now, this is one of the smaller ones. This is only a 38 quart. Uh, Bodega makes a lot of different models. I think up to 64 quarts, maybe even bigger. I'm not sure about that, but I know they make a, at least a 64 quart one, which is like twice as big as this. <sighs> Taller. Anyway, this one needed to fit where it is. And uh, it's got a vent here and a vent over there that can't be restricted. The oven gets warm, but not hot. It's okay there. I've tested it with the slide closed. It doesn't get too warm in the compartment. It's a big one. It goes all the way through the other side of the motorhome. Fit-wise, it's going to work out fine for me. So, does it fit? Check. Another thing that I needed to do was the Bluetooth uh, app that you get on your phone 
uh, iOS or Android and uh, it's also going to work on my iPad. It needed to work with the slide in, the door closed, and me up in the motor home. Did it communicate? Because um, I have other things that I have to walk back in the bedroom to check my batteries because it doesn't communicate well enough. The Bluetooth. This one worked fine. No problems. Bluetooth app on the phone working perfectly to check temperature and settings. Hold the phone. I'm editing. See what I did there? Hold the phone. <laughs> The reason it works so well up here in my motorhome is it's not Bluetooth at all, it's Wi-Fi. Which means not only will it work up here in my motorhome, it'll work anywhere in the world. Did I have a Wi-Fi signal or a cell signal? It's not Bluetooth, it's Wi-Fi. I got a bunch of quail over there. That's what you just heard. Peep, peep, peep. Oh, you can't see them, there are bunches of them running in the street. Here, let me show you. Another thing that it needed to do for where I want to use it and how I want to use it is that it has to retain its settings if the power goes off and back on because I'm going to run it on an inverter. Um, I have a 3000 watt inverter in here and I don't have any power problems. I got solar on the roof and lithium batteries. Um, but I sometimes shut my inverter off at night because there are a lot of parasitic loads in here and things that take power when you're not even using them like the convection and microwave. Uh, whether you're cooking or not, it's taking a little power. Anyway, I shut it off at night. I turn it back on in the morning when I get up. This thing retains its settings and comes back on without me coming out here, pulling off the slide and turning it back on. Inverter on, off, check, no problem. I think the reason that it works like that is because this thing's got a battery in it. Not sure about that, don't quote me. Uh, power consumption, I don't have any problems with power consumption in the RV, but if I take this out for the day in my Jeep, uh, it has a circuit in it that um, you can set to control how far down the battery draw is. In other words, bottom line, it's not going to run down your battery on your car so much that um, you can't start your car. And <laughs> for those of you who, like me, are quite often in the didn't pay enough attention to that particular thing mode, it sounds like a really good deal. So anyway, power, power consumption, not a problem. It takes, uh, according to the manual, 60 watts. And that's only while it's cooling down. The first time I plugged this in, I plugged it into 12 volts and it went down to my settings. I had it set at 40 uh, degrees for the refrigerator part and um, zero for the freezer part. And it got down to that temperature in 25 minutes on 12 volts. And doesn't work any differently when I've, I've got it plugged into 120 volts right now, which is how I intend to use it. 25 minutes it was down. And then, and that's when it's taking 60 watts, when it's going full blast cooling down. As soon as it gets down there, it goes into echo mode or the compressor uh, shuts off altogether. And uh, then it's taking less, of course. It will run on 12 to uh, 24 volts. And the cord they give that for you is long. It's like... No problem from plugging it into your dash and having it in the back of your station wagon. Cord was plenty long. As a matter of fact, the first time I plugged it in, I don't have a 12 volt plug down here. It went from here up through that window and back down to the floor, which is right here. Plenty of distance. It'll also run on uh, 120 volts AC or uh, 240, which is like European voltage. You'd need a special little plug about this big to an adapter plug if you're going to do that. But uh, if you're in the United States or any place I plan to go with my motorhome, that ain't going to be a problem. One of the things that uh, I knew about this before I got it, but was excited about, is that you can make it either all refrigerator or all freezer. Let me show you. Now, I'm just going to use this as a freezer, not a refrigerator freezer, because I have a four-door refrigerator freezer up in the motorhome. But it's real easy to convert 
This is the freezer side. This is the refrigerator side. And right now, current temperatures, it's 40 on the refrigerator side and four degrees on the freezer side. And it's real easy to make it all one thing. Watch what happens when I take this partition out. The temperature over here, as soon as I pick that up, it switched off. Now it's just one temperature setting. So it's in the refrigerator mode. I could set that down to minus four degrees. So the whole thing is a freezer. It's just that easy to convert it. Uh, has a light here. Not real uh, obvious in the daytime, but very obvious at night. Got a snap lock here. The handles, let me show you this, this is cool. The handles are magnetic. Magnetic. Over here too, it uh, snaps down there. Bodega cooler, car refrigerator and or freezer. Holds temperature down to minus four degrees Fahrenheit. And this is a compressor refrigerator. It's not that old thermal couple thing from years ago that almost worked. This is the same compressor technology you've got in your own kitchen at home. Just smaller and more efficient. Well, let's talk some more about the story I promised to tell you in the beginning of the video. We spent three days with uh, that couple. And uh, there were a wonderful three days of friendship. I've never seen them since. It happens sometimes in the RV community where you spend days with your best friends for a few days and then maybe you see them down the road, maybe you don't. But those three days with those people uh, 20 years ago and I have never forgotten it and I've never gotten over the experience. Um, first night he came and asked me, he said, uh, is there a restaurant around here you like? And I said, yeah, there's a steakhouse across the street that we've eaten for. It was his first time to Mazatlan. I'd been there a couple of times before in that RV park, Mara Rosa. And he said, okay, we're going to go over there for dinner. And on the way across the street, the six of us, a couple on the other side of him as well, his much younger California wife took me aside and said, let him pay, it's one of his pleasures in life. Okay. Well, it was the kind of place where you walk in and while you're waiting for the maitre d', you're supposed to pick out your steak in the glass case and he points to the biggest, most expensive ribeye in the case and says, we'll all six have that. The guy with the red roses came around to sell flowers to the ladies, and he bought one for every lady. Not just the three ladies in our group, every lady in the restaurant. His wife told me another story about when they were in um, the first RV park south of Nogales on their way from the United States into Mexico. Um, San Carlos is the name of the place, and... Uh, Mirador was the name of the park and I'd been there many times I wasn't with her with them this time there's a restaurant in the park and he went into the restaurant and had dinner for five nights in a row and tipped $20 not just to the waiter he tipped $20 to every person that worked in the restaurant and on the sixth night they all came out and served the two of them in their motorhome anyway he obviously had a lot of money to spend. And uh, turns out that he owned a rock quarry in Southern California and they sold landscape boulders the size of cars down to gravel and sand. And he told me that he was from Iran and his brother was still living in Iran and owned a rock quarry in Iran. So worldwide money maybe. Anyway... Uh, three wonderful days. Became good friends in three days. Sitting on the beach in Mazatlan, and he was telling me about his rock quarry, and he had a handful of sand, and it was slowly trailing out of his hand, 
and he had just told me earlier that the reason that he spent all that money was because he didn't have long to spend it. Dying of cancer. And the sand was coming out of his hand. It all went out and he opened his hand and said, rocks have been my life and I don't have many left. Didn't mean for this to be an emotional thing, but if you want one of these bodega coolers, get it. Tomorrow is not promised. There's one more thing I have to do to finish this story. Tuna steaks. And if you go to the bodegacooler.com website, you can spend to win a coupon worth up to $100 off of the cooler or other products that they have. Check it out. Product links in the description below. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.